In your first lab, you have designed a Boolean expression using block diagram schematic where you captured all the logic gates, connected all the wires and gave it some inputs and outputs. However, drawing the logic and connecting the wires with two different gates, it's not going to be feasible, especially for larger designs. Example, when you consider a modern processor, let's say for your, uh, let's say your Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max, it has about 19 billion transistors, which equates to about 10 or 11 billion logic gates. Now, just imagine if you're trying to put all those logic gates onto the block diagram schematic and try to connect everything. That's simply not going to be possible. For that, for that reason, we start using VHDL. In VHDL, V stands for Very High Speed Integrated Circuit and HDL stands for Hardware Descriptive Language. The VHDL language can be used to model digital systems and also simulate and verify. The, uh, v the VHDL programming language was introduced by the US Department of Defense in the year 1987 as a part of the IEEE standard. VHDL is similar to programming languages, but it also has its dissimilarities. For example, you might write a C code or a Python code or a Java code to print, let's say, hello world onto the console. In VHDL, you can do the same thing, but what VHDL does is it gives you the actual circuit which can do it. However, in regular programming languages, you never you can never come up with any circuit. Like the program does, doesn't output any logic gates or any circuits, but VHDL is capable of doing it. So let us look at the VHDL flow and how do you write and how do you, what's the general block diagram of a VHDL flow? So first you have your functional description which is basically your problem specification. So using the functional description, you can write VHDL code. Write or edit. The next step after you write your code is you compile it. Now you might or might not get some errors during compilation. If you get any errors during compilation, you go back and write or edit your VHDL code. And if your VHDL code compiles successfully, then you go to simulate. You simulate your code and you check the simulation results. If the simulation results are okay, then you proceed forward. But if they're not okay, you go back and edit your VHDL code. If your simulation results are okay, then you synthesize the VHDL code. What, what I mean by synthesize is you convert your code into the actual logic gates. And if the synthesis tool reports any errors, then you go back and edit your VHDL code. If your synthesis tool reports no errors, then you have to, then you have to simulate the synthesized code. See, during your synthesis process, what happens is your synthesis tool is going to use all the Boolean logics, all the Boolean laws and the Boolean definitions and some simplifying theorems to reduce your circuit so that it can produce the minimal number of logic gates. And after synthesis, you need to simulate your synthesized code because during the process of conversion, there might be some errors which can be introduced by the simulation tool. So you have to ensure that the, the simulation results before synthesis and the simulation results after synthesis are equivalent. If your simulation results are incorrect, you go back and edit your VHDL code. And if your simulation results are okay, then you have a correct VHDL description. And then once you have the correct VHDL description, you can then send it to the later stages of manufacturing. That is, you can have some, you can make some GDS files and this GDS files goes to the fabrication facility where the actual chips are made. So this is the overall VHDL flow.